Moving into 2020, I think Battlefield 5 has still quite a bit of work to do if it's looking to be in the community's good books this year. We were so close to ending 2019 strongly and positively with the launch of the Pacific, which, standing on its own, is a really good addition to Battlefield 5, but unfortunately, Update 5.2 really took the wind out of the sails, and now the game once again is drifting aimlessly. And the community around Battlefield 5 is starting to wonder what DICE is really going to do next. In this video, I'm going to list off a bunch of things that I think Battlefield 5 needs to focus on or add in 2020 to be considered successful. Number one on the list, and just before I carry on, there is no particular order to this list, but I think starting with this one sets the right tone here because, well, we all love content. I think a clear direction from DICE when it comes to the new content should really be expected. Now, to be fair, the content added in Chapter 5 and the information and the communication we had around that content before it launched was actually very, very good. We've had two new factions added to the game, giving us a new look for the soldiers. We've had plenty of new primary and secondary weapons added. Some of those came with the launch of the chapter, and others have come via Tides of War. We've had three new maps added to the game, which I think have all been very well received by the community. They definitely feel different to the maps that have come before them. We got new vehicles as well, and the inclusion of those battle pickup weapons, the Katana and the Flamethrower. They reintroduce some of the chaos and the randomness that was missing from Battlefield 5. The Pacific content, the quality of it, and the focus around those two major nations fighting out in the water, that's been really, really good. And we are still set to get a fourth map as well, the jungle setting Solomon Islands, and a couple more weapons as well in the future, the grease gun and the lunge mine. So there's still a little bit more content to come, which is great. But as I said, beyond the end of Chapter 5, we don't really know anything about the future of Battlefield 5. With EA seemingly always working in quarters throughout the year, and that's supposedly due to the way that the company is structured and how they report their revenue, I think it's quite unlikely that we'll receive an entire 2020 roadmap. And I think it's also quite unlikely that we'll see a roadmap as big as the one we got for Chapter 4 and Chapter 5, because that roadmap actually caused DICE issues. The huge problems with content delivery during Chapter 4 and all of the bugs that the team encountered, I think having a roadmap out at that time really hurt them because they'd already set timeframes on different pieces of content and then they had to delay those timeframes and that angered the community and made them even more upset than they were already with Battlefield 5. What I think is actually going to happen, we'll end up seeing a different approach from DICE in 2020. Maybe they'll take it on a patch-by-patch -patch basis, but a few headline features happening outside of that. So, for example here, I expect DICE to communicate what their plans are for Chapter 6 in the not-too-distant future. But the content and the updates that maybe come with that, so burying down below just the announcement of Chapter 6, I'm expecting that to come patch by patch. This kind of works out as a middle ground then, sort of something different than what we had in 2019, but still kind of keeping everybody up to date. DICE makes sure that the community knows what is coming with these highlight features and then information patch by patch, but they're also making sure that they're not committing to things too far out and then having to change their delivery dates and ending up annoying the community again. At any rate, DICE needs to clearly and confidently communicate their plans for 2020 to the community, but I don't expect some gigantic 2020 roadmap to really appear from them. I just don't think that's going to happen. Number two on the list, and this is kind of an extension to number one because it revolves around the content I was talking about, I think we need to see a new theatre of war in 2020, and I would be really surprised if we didn't see a new theatre of war. Now, the Pacific that launched in October 2019, that represented a big change for Battlefield 5, almost in the same style of a DLC from the days of previous Battlefield games. I think Battlefield 3 did it best. That kind of needs to happen here in 2020, the introduction of another Theatre of War to change up the game again and keep players on their toes. Personally, I think we're going to see DICE take on the eastern front of World War II. That's going to set us up for battles between the Soviet Union 
and Germany. So fighting in locations like Kursk and Stalingrad, that would be pretty epic to see in Battlefield 5. And it would emphasize how much manpower was put into the war effort in Eastern Europe during the early stages of the 1940s. If the Pacific was highlighting all the different battles that were happening around the islands out there, then perhaps the war of manpower in the Eastern Europe would be the focus for DICE. For most of the battles on the Eastern Front, it was actually the Germans on the defensive after a certain point, and that would signal a real change in the setup of maps and battles that we've seen so far in Battlefield 5. And a new theatre would also bring new iconic weapons from the Soviet Union, new vehicles, and potentially, if it followed in the same lines as the Pacific, some battle pickups as well. The Russians did use a massive anti-tank rifle during the war, the PTRD-41. That could be a really cool pickup. Next up, I'd like to see DICE add a functioning team balancer to Battlefield 5, and by extension, I think a live scoreboard view built into the server browser for the game wouldn't go amiss either. Now, team balancing has been an issue within Battlefield 5 for a long time, almost since the launch of the game, and I personally believe it's one of the main reasons that players aren't sticking with Battlefield 5 long term. If a new player is stuck on the receiving end of defeat after defeat against an enemy team that is stacked with good, competent players, then that new player is less likely to want to keep playing. And if over a few different game sessions, so let's say they play for a few days in a row, if they're experiencing the same situation, then that new player is likely not going to bother playing Battlefield 5 again after that point. Now, this effect is called churn in the game industry. That's where new players come into a game, but they stop playing very, very quickly. And you'll find that most development studios out there, especially if they're running a live service, a multiplayer title, they're going to try and reduce the churn as much as possible because they want to retain those new players. DICE is trying to reduce the churn already by messing around with the weapon balance, which I think is the wrong way to go, and I'll get onto that in a moment, but I believe the unbalanced servers is also a really big reason for players stopping playing. And the fact that Battlefield 5 doesn't already have a built-in team balancer is frankly beyond me. Surely a 64-player multiplayer game needs a balancing system to make sure things are fair and entertaining for every single player who's playing the game. And then there's that live scoreboard element I mentioned. This is something that previous front-end systems for Battlefield games had. It was part of Battle Log for Battlefield 4, and it did exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you a live view of the score in that server, so you can decide if it's a match that you want to join or not. Maybe it's towards the end of a round and your favourite map is next in rotation, that's cool. You know it's only going to be a few minutes before that server rolls onto the next map. Maybe the round has only just started, and that's cool as well, because now you know you're going to get a full match in, and you won't just be joining a server about to finish a match, and maybe you chalk up a loss on your stats. I don't think it would be too hard to implement that into the front end, considering the front end already displays the server name, the rotation, the ping, the current player count, and a few more things as well. I think it would be a really nice quality of life addition to Battlefield 5. Number four on the list is a robust anti-cheat solution for PC. Another factor of players quitting Battlefield 5 on PC specifically will undoubtedly be from cheaters. Battlefield 5 does have a big cheater problem and it's fairly common to come across one every few days at the moment. At least that's my experience. I know some areas where Battlefield 5 is played, cheating is more rampant and it is infecting the normal servers of the game and that's not good for anybody. The more cheaters you encounter, the more you question if the team behind the game, the team supporting it, really cares about what is actually happening. And seeing so many cheaters makes me less inclined to play because my experience suffers as a result. A AAA shooter game run by the largest game producer in the world should have a proper anti-cheat solution, and it really shouldn't be relying on manual reporting of cheaters. And there's also absolutely no feedback on any reports made either, so there's no way to tell if the time that you're taking to report these people is really worth it, and that adds to the frustration. Battlefield 5 needs a proper anti-cheat solution if it wants to be taken seriously.
Number five, and this is one of my more nice to have quality of life improvements. I like to see a redesign of the current assignment system. The menu that houses all of the assignments, it holds them all in one gigantic long list. I think I've got about 90 or so assignments that I haven't done, but I can only see about, what, 10 or 12 of them on the screen at any one time. So then you have to scroll all the way through the list, find the one that you want, click into it, and then activate it in order to track them. So the whole system is a little bit counterintuitive. I think splitting up all of those assignments into different sections and then breaking them into groups on the screen would be a better way to go. So, for example, if you're interested in only completing the proficiency and the mastery assignments, they could be under a weapons tab, whereas the chapter assignments, they could be in a chapter tab alongside the weapons and so on. That might be a better way of laying things out on the screen. And then also, still having to back out of servers into the main menu in order to activate new assignments is possibly the worst element of Battlefield 5's user experience loop. And I'm staggered that DICE still hasn't done something to at least allow players to select new assignments via an in-game menu. There's also the fact that you can only pick four assignments to track, which I know is a pain for quite a few people out there. So why don't they simply all track at once? What's the reason that we can only have four of them tracking. Well, as I understand it, and this may not be correct, but this is what I think is happening here, the assignments, they're tracked server side, not client side. And the reason for this is so that players can't cheat the assignments and unlock a bunch of company coin or skins that they didn't earn by simply editing files on their PC. This isn't something you can really do on console because the entire system is locked down and you can't get into the file system. So with that in mind, with the assignments tracking on the server, that means data is sent backwards and forwards all the time between the client and the server to check if the assignment points are earned or are completed. And that takes up space in each update between the client and the server. Thus the reason for only four assignments being tracked. If all of the assignments were tracked at once, then it would create a strain on the connection and potentially other really important information from the game, so like player locations on the map and damage dealt or damage taken, that information could be delayed and it would make for a worse gaming experience. So it makes sense when you think about it in that way that you can only track four different assignments, but is it really a good situation? The solution would be to rework the assignments to be client-side checked, rather than across the server. That way you would free up some space in the updates for other information, and you'd have to accept that some players might edit files to get skins and company coin, but that's gonna be a very, very small section of the player base that's going to do that, because most people don't even realize that you can do that. So is it really worth the information being server-side? In my opinion, no. Do I think DICE is actually gonna change it? Probably not but sprucing up the assignments menu at least, that would be a good update. And then to sort of finish off my list here, I've got some quick fire items that I could talk about a little bit more in depth, but I don't know if I really need to. A couple of these things I've mentioned before, but I just kind of wanted to round up the video with some smaller points. So first of all, a concerted effort to reinstate the lethal gunplay with recoil would be greatly appreciated by myself and the core community around Battlefield 5. DICE really shot themselves in the foot with update 5.2, making wide sweeping changes that really weren't needed when there were so many other things that they could have done to help new players have a good time with Battlefield 5. I'd like to see a revert to the old gunplay system. I don't think it's going to happen, but at least bring back the lethality with recoil, because after update 5.2 hotfix, we don't really have any recoil anymore, so the guns feel really bland. I'd like to see more cosmetics available for company coin in the armory. DICE has really been pushing these Boins only bundles recently, which do give players a lot more items for their real life money, because they're the same price as what old epic items used to be, but you get more items for that same amount of money. So that's a good thing in a certain sense, but there's been basically no effort put into the lower level company coin items. There should be more on offer for players who are content only spending their time playing the game, not their money. There needs to be options for both sets of players, and they need to be attractive, 
not just the same skins for the same guns over and over again. I think removing the snap aim assist on consoles would be a good move. This kind of snuck in with update 5.2 and was activated without any points in the patch notes. That might have been a mistake, it might not have been, but it was added to the game and people weren't aware that that was happening. And I don't actually think anyone asked for this to be implemented into Battlefield 5 or is really happy that this feature is now in Battlefield 5. And I remember a campaign against it in the Battlefield 1 days where all it was doing was helping the really good players more than the novice ones by making the game easy mode. All it would do is snap to center mass and you'd be able to fire and you would get kills relatively easily. If that's added to the game, good players are going to use that feature just as much as novice players and I would argue that just gives the good players another leg up over the novice players. I've all but given up on Grand Operations being redesigned at this point or reverted to the Battlefield 1 setup, but I guess there's no harm in restating that Grand Operations is really not a very well implemented game mode, and considering it's supposed to be a headline feature of Battlefield 5, it was advertised as one of the core features, it doesn't look great when the mode hasn't received any content since early 2019, so we're talking pretty much a year ago now. Something needs to be done about it, maybe retiring the game mode and taking it out of the game because it's really not that popular, or redesigning it and taking it back to the Battlefield 1 setup, which people really, really enjoyed, might be a good way to go. Either way, something needs to happen with Grand Operations. And then I think some rather substantial improvements are needed to the new Community Games feature. Never sounds great when improvements are needed the moment something launches. But the way that DICE has implemented it with these non-permanent servers and not allowing players to gain chapter XP or unlock Tides of War assignments, that basically ruined the launch of community games. And it makes it pointless if you want to grow and maintain a community within Battlefield 5. If the servers just disappear, then how can you maintain a community? Admin features are needed, the ability to have servers permanently stay live is needed, and proper configurability of the server with settings on par with what Battlefield 1 offered at the very least are needed if DICE wants to look back at community games as not a complete waste of their development time. And lastly, tank body customization. It's still coming soon. The longest running meme of Battlefield 5 still doesn't have a launch date in sight, but to be brutally honest, it's really not a joke anymore. It might come with plenty of jeering from the community when it does finally arrive, but with it being such a prominent part of the marketing campaign and the trailers of Battlefield 5 before the launch, it's a feature that DICE simply has to deliver on at this point. If they don't deliver on it, who would ever trust their marketing ever again? Now, I know there are more points that I could have mentioned, but I just took the ones that mattered to me the most, the ones that filled in the gaps, that are still left in Battlefield 5's lineup and the ones that would have the most overall impact on the game. If you've got your own suggestions though, please feel free to drop them below and I'll highlight some of them in the comment section so that other people can read them. But if there's, there's just one overarching thing that DICE really needs to do in 2020 if they want to make Battlefield 5 a success. They need to listen to the community that they have around the game. That has to be a priority. DICE's other game, Battlefront 2, that's had a massive resurgence in the last 12 months because the team behind it delivered what the community wanted. That then attracted new players because there's good sentiment around the game and now player numbers are close to what they were at the launch of Battlefront 2 over two years ago. DICE has made some pretty huge mistakes going against community sentiment in 2018 and 2019 for Battlefield 5 in pursuit of new players rather than working with and maintaining their current community. It got somewhat revitalized in October with the Pacific, but then it got hard hit again with update 5.2. I'm not sure DICE can afford any more missteps or mistakes like that in 2020. But thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.